two, learning and cognition. Behaviorist psychologists believe people respond to the consequences of their behavior. In other words, if it feels good, you're probably going to do it again. Behaviorist psychologists don't think it's important to study people's inner needs, thoughts, feelings, and motives. They go straight for the behavior, looking at how people respond to the things in their environment that affect them. People learn to associate events. Like when you see lightning, you listen for thunder, because you know it's coming. Associating events like lightning and thunder is called associative learning, or stimulus response learning. You make associations and figure out that some events occur together. There are two types of associative or stimulus response learning, classical conditioning and operant conditioning. These two types of learning are kind of similar, but they're actually pretty different. Here's the difference in a nutshell. In classical conditioning, you have some stimulus from the environment trigger a response in the subject, rat, human, whatever. In operant conditioning, the subject does some behavior, and then the environment responds. Section A, classical conditioning. While studying how dogs digest food, Ivan Pavlov noticed that his dog started drooling in anticipation of the food. When the dogs saw their food bowls, heard the noises that they always heard before they were fed, and even saw the person who usually fed them, they would salivate as if there was food right there in front of them. The events that normally preceded the food elicited the drooling response. The idea behind classical conditioning is that a stimulus from the environment elicits or stimulates a reflexive response. Pavlov realized that his dogs were exhibiting an important form of learning, associative learning. The dogs associated the appearance of the dog bowls, the person who fed them, and the noises of getting the food ready with being fed. Although Pavlov started out studying digestion in dogs, once he noticed this important type of learning going on, he decided to study learning. So, Pavlov sounded a tone just before he put meat into the dog's mouths. At first, the tone by itself didn't get the dogs to salivate, but after a few times of pairing the tone with the meat, the dogs started to salivate when they heard the tone, because they anticipated that the tone would be followed by meat. This is a classic case of associative or stimulus response learning. The dogs learned to associate the tone with the meat, so either the tone or the meat could make them drool. Now you know the experiment, here come the terms. The meat that the dogs wanted to eat is the unconditioned stimulus, or UCS. If you've ever had a begging dog drool on your leg during dinner, you know that dogs naturally salivate when they anticipate eating. No one has to teach them to do it. Dogs naturally drool at the sight of food. That's why the meat is an unconditioned stimulus. It naturally and automatically elicits a response. The unconditioned stimulus naturally and automatically elicits a response. If I try to light your finger with my lighter, you will pull your finger away naturally and automatically. The fire is an unconditioned stimulus. Remember that a stimulus is the thing that brings about a response. The dog's unconditioned response to the meat was salivation. Uh, no one had to teach the dogs how to salivate when they smelled and tasted the meat. Uh, it just came naturally, so the response is unconditioned. <laughs> so, when I try to light your finger on fire, and you naturally and automatically pull your finger away, your response, pulling your finger away, is an unconditioned response. I didn't have to teach you to pull your finger away. You just did it naturally. So it's unconditioned, an unconditioned response. A neutral stimulus is one that, unlike the unconditioned stimulus, does not naturally produce a response. In Pavlov's experiments, the neutral stimulus was the tone. Until the dogs learned to associate the tone with the meat, it did not produce any response in them at all. Did you hear that? A neutral stimulus does not naturally and automatically produce a response. Once the dogs paired the sound of the tone with the meat and started to salivate just at the sound of the tone, the tone was no longer a neutral stimulus. The dogs were taught or conditioned to salivate at the sound of the tone. So the tone is now the conditioned stimulus, or the CS. So let me get this straight. A neutral stimulus doesn't produce any response at all. 
But once the neutral stimulus is associated with an unconditioned stimulus, one that naturally produces a response, the neutral stimulus isn't neutral anymore because it now elicits a response as well. <laughs> right. And as you might expect, the conditioned response, or CR, is the dog's drooling in response to the tone. Until they were taught to, they would not naturally salivate just at the sound of a tone. After they were conditioned, they would drool just to the sound of a tone. This is the conditioned response. The conditioned response is not a natural response. You have to learn it. Remember, unconditioned means unlearned. Something that just happens naturally, automatically. Unlike this stag burn food, don't know how to use a turn signal. And condition means learn. Something you made happen. Something that doesn't happen just by itself. Commercial products have paired themselves with lifestyles for a long time. They want you to associate their product with something you want to get. <laughs> Remember, in classical conditioning, first there's a stimulus from the environment, then you get the response from the subject. In the case of my dog skis, the meat was the stimulus from the environment, and the dog skis responded by salivating. Didn't you? You salivated all over the place. Back at the beginning of the 20th century, John Watson experimented on a kid named Little Albert to find out more about conditioning humans. Watson's experiments would probably not be repeated today because they're considered pretty unethical. But we can learn a lot from poor Little Albert. We're going to throw some more terms at you after we describe this experiment, so stay on your toes. Little Albert, like all young kids, was naturally afraid of loud noises, but he was not afraid of white rats. Watson put Little Albert into a room with a white rat, and just as Little Albert was reaching out to touch the rat, Watson smashed a hammer against a steel bar right behind his head. After only a few pairings of the sound and the rat, Little Albert burst into tears as soon as he saw the rat. And a few days later, poor Little Albert burst into tears when he spotted a white teddy bear, a white rabbit, and a white fur coat. Let's apply the terms to this experiment. The unconditioned stimulus, or UCS, is the loud noise. The unconditioned response, or UCR, is Little Albert's fear of the loud noise because he's naturally afraid of it. These factors are unconditioned because there is no learning involved with them. Little Albert is naturally afraid of loud noises. He's not naturally afraid of rats, so the rat is the conditioned stimulus, or CS. His fear of the rat is the conditioned response, or CR. The first phase of classical conditioning learning is called acquisition. Acquisition is the time period in which the unconditioned stimulus, the one you respond to naturally and automatically, becomes associated with the conditioned stimulus, the one you have to learn to respond to. The subject acquires the association. In the case of Little Albert, acquisition occurred when Albert learned to associate the loud noise with the appearance of the rat. Once the response has been conditioned, in other words, once Albert learned to be afraid of the rat because he associated it with the loud noise, generalization may occur. Generalization is the tendency for things that are similar to the conditioned stimulus to cause a response that's similar to the conditioned response. So, when little Albert freaked out at the sight of a fur coat, he was demonstrating generalization. Albert was not conditioned to fear fur coats, but fur coats reminded him enough of the rats that he generalized his fear to the coats as well. Discrimination is the ability to tell the difference between similar stimuli. It's like the opposite of generalization. If little Albert could discriminate between the fur coat and the rat, he wouldn't be afraid of the fur coat. If Watson had someone wearing a fur coat come and play with little Albert, and he didn't whack the iron bar to make lots of noise while they were playing, Albert would eventually learn discrimination. He would be able to discriminate, or tell the difference, between the fur coat and the rat. And he'd know that the fur coat was not associated with the scary noise like the rat was. Extinction is the process of getting rid of a conditioned response. You can make a conditioned response go away if you present the conditioned stimulus, like the rat, a whole bunch of times without following it with the unconditioned stimulus, like the big scary noise. Let's go back to Little Albert. If Watson had shown Little Albert the rat a whole bunch of times without banging the iron rod to make a big noise, 
Albert would have eventually caught on that nothing scary would happen when he saw the rat, and he would stop being afraid of the rat. His association of the rat with the big scary noise would eventually become extinct. Actually, the term extinction is a little misleading because the association of the unconditioned stimulus, the big noise, with the conditioned stimulus, the rat, only becomes suppressed. It doesn't really go away completely. Little Albert may all of a sudden start freaking out again at the sight of the rat, even though the rat hasn't been associated with the noise for quite a while. This is called spontaneous recovery. So little Albert's getting brave, and he'll pet the rat because he's pretty sure nothing scary will happen when he does. But then one day, out of the blue, Albert just starts sobbing and crying for his mommy when he sees the rat. Albert is experiencing spontaneous recovery. Let's review. The unconditioned stimulus naturally and automatically elicits a response. And an unconditioned response is a response that a subject gives naturally, without having to learn anything. A neutral stimulus doesn't naturally produce any response at all. Once a neutral stimulus is associated with an unconditioned stimulus and starts to produce a response, it becomes a conditioned stimulus. The subject has been conditioned to respond to it. A conditioned response is a response that has been learned, like the dogs learning to salivate to the sound of a tone. It's not something they would do naturally. Section B.